Well, after finishing last year poorly, the Bunnies were expected to turn things around in 2024, but everything just got worse. So what went wrong and can master coach Wayne Bennett turn things around? This is the 2024 season review for the South Sydney Rabbitohs. So to break down the 2024 season for the South Sydney Rabbitohs, once again, expert analyst for Zero Tackle, Darren Parkin. How are you, mate? Going very well, yeah. Well, they, they started the year in Vegas, the Bunnies, and probably on reflection would have preferred to stay there. It was just a nightmare. <laughs> as soon as they came home, it wasn't wasn't a great start and, and only got worse for them. Yeah, absolutely. So speaking of 12 wins in 2023 and seven wins in 2024, really went downhill there. Yeah, defensively especially. They, I mean, they scored seven less points but defensively they were about seven points worse off a game so it was the biggest drop off in any category of any side uh, from season to season and when you factor in that they were scoring a little bit less it's about a nine point swing per game and you spoke a little bit about the start about how they were it was anticipated that, that they would bounce back and you factor in they were nine and two last year so they lost three and went three and ten in their last thirteen matches. So, put that into this year, they've won ten of thirty-seven. So, I think what they were hoping for in the off-season was that it was an aberration the way last season finished. But it turns out it wasn't, and, and maybe they paid the price for not addressing some of those problems when they arose last year. Thinking, okay, well, an off-season, getting back together, things will be okay. But some of those fractures were still there. And if we look at the numbers, so they were about 600 down on kick return metres and had 33 less line breaks. So they were constantly mm. on the back foot. They were starting in a defensive position and then they missed nearly 100 more tackles on the season. So from already starting off behind the eight ball, they just weren't able to put anywhere near enough pressure on and, and as a result were conceding very heavily. Yeah, absolutely. Some pretty damning numbers there. So let's get over to the 2024 pass mark. All right, so... Obviously, we we're hoping that they would turn things around. Well, a lot of Rabbitohs fans were hoping they would turn things around coming into 2024. Uh, so what would we classify their pass mark for this year, like coming into the season? Yeah, I mean, there's an element of glass half full when you look at it and, and summarise it. But grand finalists three years ago narrowly missed the eight last year, having been on top of the ladder at the halfway point of the season. I think a lot of people looked at their list changes and thought they'd got a tiny bit better. So the, the belief was that they would bounce straight into the eight and, and contend. That didn't happen, but if you break the year down, so they were one and nine after 10 games, which is their equal worst start in their 116 year history. But then they pulled out six of their next seven, which probably underlines in that glass half full sense how good they can actually be. But then they fell over and lost seven in a row again with the destabilising impact of their season. So on nearly every measurement, it's an underachieving season. But the fact that you've underachieved means that that universal consensus that you're better than, you, than you're showing hopefully gives them some degree of positivity that there's a bit to work with. Yeah. It's almost more frustrating mm. as a mm. fan to see that they are capable of stringing some wins together. So I think we can safely uh, say that this is a fail on the past mark for 2024. Very much so. I mean, we compare it to the Tigers who finished below them, which was our last review. I think there's, there was a lot more positivity around what the Tigers did, even though they won one less game than the Bunnies. Yeah, absolutely. So we're just going to dig deeper into the lowlights. So, again, plenty of lowlights in 2024. Uh, I guess we should probably start with the sacking of Jason Demetrio. Yeah, well, we spoke a little bit at the start about maybe the writing being on the wall entering this season. There was a, there's was there got to be a reason why a side falls away. And, you know, they, they ended 2023 under really disappointing circumstances, went from leading the league at round 11 to missing the finals completely. And, and one of the catalysts at the time last year was believed to be assistant Sam Burgess walking out on the club. He wasn't seeing eye to eye with then coach Jason Demetrio there was rumblings around the place at that stage as to which side certain players were on and, and whether they could patch up any of those holes and uh, their poor form through that off-season spilled into this season as well and, and that disharmony seemingly remaining all across the club they compounded that with a really tough early draw so they had the Vegas trip and then they played a lot of the very good sides in the early part of the season and then by May eight, nine weeks into the season, uh, Demetrio was was fired. So uh, that, that's a major low light on, on the campaign and, and it was probably something that they hoped was fixed but wasn't. And then you throw in Latrell Mitchell, uh, played some pretty good footy during Origin, yeah. but only played 11 club.
club games for the year due to injury and suspension. And then he had the famous, uh, infamous white powder photo as well. And as a result of that club suspension, he's still going to miss the opening game of the season. So, um, yeah, that was one of the unwanted headlines from a, a star. Yeah. So Mitchell probably a bit reflective of them as a yep. whole again. So showing what he is capable of, mm-hmm. but... Again, falling short and um, in the papers for all the wrong reasons. Yeah, and showing what he was capable of at a higher level, unfortunately. At origin level, they didn't get a lot of it at club level. Mm -hmm. Um, And now they won't have him in round one. And we'll discuss a little bit later on how they handled that uh, suspension wasn't great either uh, yep. from from most reports. Absolutely. So we've been a bit negative uh, in this season <laughs> review to start with. Let's go from the lowlights to the highlights. All right, so obviously a pretty dour year, but one of the highlights that we can point to is Jack Wyden. Yeah, definitely. He was one of the, the rare players that was there for most of the season. They had an injury-ravaged campaign, which often happens with the, the bottom sides or is a contributing factor. It was his first season at the club. He won the George Pickens medal uh, for their, their best player over the course of the year. If you look on field at some of their results, when they had that five-match winning streak or won six out of seven in the middle of the year, they beat the Broncos, who at the time were going a lot better than their eventual ladder position was and Manly who ended up playing finals so uh, it, it showed a little bit during their best patch of, of football uh, and their forward pack clicked during that run but that was it it was about a month where all of that was flowing and they had that link up that that saw them touted by plenty at the start of the year and, and that's what they've got to work off yeah absolutely all right sticking with the positive let's move over to the most improved so most improved for the Rabbitohs this year. I think it's a pretty obvious one. Keon Kaloa Matangi. Yeah, front rower found his best form by the middle of the season when they started to. He, he carried them at times and he's an imposing figure. A 26-year-old making the switch from the, the second row uh, to starting lock in the absence of his captain. He thrived, scored f- uh, five tries, averaged 157 running metres per game. And he was one of only, I think, three players to feature in all 24 games for the, the Bunnies this season. And usually give an honourable mention, Jai Gray performed pretty well for them at, uh, at full back. But uh, the highlights were few and far between. Yep, absolutely. All right, moving now to the headlines. So the Bunnies made the news quite a lot this year and probably one of the biggest stories for them and probably one of the biggest stories league-wide was Wayne Bennett uh, returning to coach them. In yeah, and, and, and a positive story, I guess, in terms of their future. Look, he's 74 years of age, had that stint at the Dolphins as their inaugural coach, but did coach the Bunnies from 2019 until 2021, grand final in his first season uh, back then, so they'd be hoping for an immediate bounce, which he can generally produce for them. And, and I think... Fans would be encouraged. His, his first comment to the players from what we can understand when he was hired and he walked in the door and addressed the group at the end of the season was just to give them a huge cook. Uh, he probably just sprayed them as soon as he walked in the door and obviously shows that he means business. So he, he's got into them saying, look, this is unacceptable. You've got to get better. Uh, and he's basically planted a flag saying this is what we expect. And uh, one of his first tasks is going to have to be to control his uh, ill-tempered star, Latrell Mitchell, who missed more than half the season with injury and suspension. And... We did touch on it a little bit at the start. The club has copped a bit of criticism for the way they handled it. They tried to find every conceivable loophole to have his one-match suspension played out in the last round of this season, not the first round of next year. And people questioned them, thinking, well, are you taking it seriously? You're trying to have a minimum impact on your group but you can understand why they're doing that but yeah you'd think Wayne Bennett would be the the one who could potentially control the wayward Latrell Mitchell if they can get 20 games out of him then that's going to serve them pretty well yep absolutely so let's get a 2 2025 under Wayne Bennett and take a look at their pass mark So, Bunnies fans are probably going to be pretty conflicted coming into 2025. What could we point to as a pass mark for next season? Yeah, if you look at it just on lists, they've clearly got one of the best eight lists in the competition. So, they, again, where we were at the start of the year, they should be playing finals with what they have in terms of their scoring and and running capabilities and the depth that they've got in, in most positions. I think... If we can look at 2024 as there still being a bit of an odour in the in the air about what happened the year before and they never recovered from that and the difficult draw and the, the sacked coach, they could not sustain any level of momentum. So how much of the changes are, are cultural? If, if Wayne Bennett comes in, settles things down, gets them all rowing in the same direction, uh, can they harness their best football and play finals? I think so. I just think it was a year that... 
you know, it, it's hard to imagine having a worse season than that in terms of everything going wrong. But I think stability-wise, if they get that right, then they're at the very least a finals team. Yeah, hopefully they can pull it together. I've got a mate who's a very uh, passionate Souths fan. I think we all do. It's not Rusty, is it? Yeah, no, it's uh, <laughs> Gavin Semple. So shout out to Gavin. I don't know if he's going to be more annoying or less annoying if they're successful <laughs> next year, if they make finals. So um, let's see how they go in 2025. Well, that wraps it up for the 2024 season review for the Rabbitohs. Thank you, Darren. No worries. Yeah, it's going to be a fascinating watch. Absolutely. Uh, let us know in the comments if you think the Bunnies can bounce back in 2025. Remember to like and subscribe. We're going to be doing season reviews for every team. And if there's one thing we know about league is that the news doesn't ever really stop. So catch all the latest NRL news at zerotackle.com.